girl Shalane. I'm back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss the government shutdown and y'all how this impacts Social Security, free lunch, SNAP, WIC, military, everything. We also are going to talk about new updates to pandemic EBT and some more states that have been approved. We're going to talk about this October 1st increase in SNAP. That's if we get it if the government doesn't shut down and more my darling this is going to be a long video so if you want to know what is going on in the lovely world of ebt you already know what to do stay tuned your girl's got you covered now if this is your first time tuning into my channel hi hello hey friends my name is chalet and here on this channel we discuss shopping saving and everything in between i would love to have you a part of my internet family super easy click the big old red subscribe button down below and you're in just like that and while you're at it if you are an ebt recipient or not you can try out amazon prime free for 30 days guys it is super free 99 i know you buy some on amazon don't even play like you don't i know you buy something on amazon so go ahead and click the link try it out for 30 days free and um yeah it's on me why not all right guys so let's go ahead and start off with some of the states that the internet is talking about that has money pending. Now, according to the internet, right, New York has money pending from the 24th through the 28th of this month on their card. So now this is super big, right? Because the news was reporting at the end of December. So check your cards if you are in New York and let me know if you got that money. Also in New York, formerly incarcerated individuals that are returning back to New York City can apply for SNAP benefits 30 days before being released from prison. So this is a pilot program that they started in 2021. Illinois did the same thing and is still continuing to do that to this day as well. But pretty much while they are in prison, they can apply for the benefits. If they do get approved for SNAP benefits, they will have their card in hand the day that they are released from prison. I do like this program as well, but now they're trying to push it to the forefront so people know that they can start applying for it and so before the expansion in this pilot program they would have to wait at least 45 days before they can get benefits if not longer because they had to wait till they were released from prison then go ahead and apply and then go through that whole process and then wait on their benefits so i like this program but let me know new york did y'all know that this program existed or not nah? As well as in Maryland, they said children under six is paying out as well. But it's also a lot of fraud and stuff that's going on in Maryland. And Maryland has paid out nearly $1 billion a month in extra food stamps. So officials in Maryland said several years ago, they managed to disable like an system that was intended to check whether food stamps application had low enough income to qualify for the benefits. Well, according to a state audit, somebody disabled this and that allowed tens of thousands of people to start collecting these benefits that they didn't deserve. Now, whoever disabled it, y'all the real MVP. But even after the state learned of this problem, they still continue to pay the benefits. They said 75% of the cases were still getting benefits a month later, two months later, three months later. So I guess they were like, you know what? We are looking out for the people. We're doing this for the culture, right? So now the USDA, they have officially said that it was blowing nearly $1 billion a month in overpayments, as well as double dippers and just people that were ineligible for payments as well. So let me know if you're in Maryland, did you get those benefits? Now they haven't said that you had to pay the money back or do anything. I don't know, but that's what we have. Now, also speaking of food stamps, we know next month, October 1st, it is expected to increase about 3% for the next 12 months. This happens every single year where SNAP does an increase. The increase is based on the, your salary as well as like the number of people in your home. But this could all change depending on the government shutdown because that could impact our SNAP benefits, guys. So, while the fight over federal spending is like playing out right now on Capitol Hill, the effects of this potential government shutdown is going to be felt far and beyond. Now, the Biden administration is warning that a shutdown would mean like vital nutrition assistance could be at risk for millions of people who rely on SNAP, 
wick also we know like so security everything and the reason why for nutrition services is because it's managed by the usda right and they would be unable to provide any benefits if there was a shutdown now we don't know how long the shutdown could last or if it will happen but a lot of officials from the usda they're saying hey they're trying to continue as normal and get through october they should be able to pay out october according to the USDA. But, but they are telling lawmakers to keep in mind that their actions do have real consequences on the health of millions of moms and children and obviously a long-term term impact on the country. So that's why these shutdowns are really so devastating, guys, because, I mean, it's just not for, like, federal government officials. Not only does it disrupt our regular lives, it disrupts the lives of people who count on these programs. A lot of local food pantries are now trying to be an alternative as well. I mean, this affects me when it comes to military. It affects your child at free lunch. It's a lot. Like, don't think it doesn't affect you. It does. All right, so let's keep it moving. Where now food stamps can now be streamlined under a proposed bill for a phone call. So, you know, all you got to do is get on that hotline bling, hotline bling, and you can get your food stamps, right? According to Congress Vermont Senator Peter Welch and New Hampshire Representative Annie Custer, on Monday, they are among the sponsors who want to streamline the Nutrition Paperwork Act of 2023. Now, this measure aims to, like, modernize SNAP benefits, and also they want to make it easier for you to apply for SNAP benefits over the phone by allowing the use of verbal affirmation instead of like expensive recording software that is only available in some states. Now, they're stating, look, we need to do everything in our power to make it easier, not harder, for folks to get connected to the nutrition assistance programs that they need. This bill will streamline the process of signing up for SNAP and help individuals, families in rural Vermont, as well as in rural communities all across America, get access to the food they need as well. And I think they should do it. I mean, we're in 2023, okay? At, at this point, we're like in George Jetson, okay? We're in the future. You should be able to get everything, phone, app, something, all right? I'm just saying. Let me know down below what do you guys think. I mean, while they're at it, they should go ahead and throw in that recertification as well. Everything should be done by your cell phone, okay? This is what most people have in their hands. I mean, it is what it is. That's where we live. We live in America, and we use our phones. All right, so guys, let's go ahead and discuss the Farm Bill, where now they're talking about a lot of recommendations, and some of the recommendations for the Farm Bill is to lift the five-year waiting period on authorized immigrants. They want to look at expanding college SNAP eligibility. They also want to end the lifetime ban on people that have a drug felony felony from accessing SNAP as well. Now, Georgia rightfully opted out of this policy, but the ban should be struck from federal law and end the policy in every state. They're also looking at to eliminate SNAP's arbitrary three-month um, limit for certain adults who meet certain work requirements. So remember this just passed where like able-bodied adults that instead if they don't find a job, they only can get SNAP benefits for three months out of a three-year period as well. So they want to remove that language. Now they're doing all these things, but they have not addressed on increasing SNAP benefits because right now, remember, your SNAP is based on like $6 a day which we know that is not enough money for you to be able to feed your children or even select healthy options if you want it. So a lot of people have been arguing that that $6 per day needs to be increased as well. But so far, I mean, the farm bill, while it's great, it's kind of being pushed down because everything is taken, you know, the forefront with the government shut down and what's going to happen. But these are the things that they are looking at for the farm bill. What do you think about that as well? I think the lifetime ban for SNAP on felons, that definitely needs to be removed from there, as well as three months over a 36-month period. I can see that being removed. But let me know down below, what do you think? All right, next we are headed to New Mexico, where they are trying to work through their backlog of requests for obtaining food stamps as well. So if you haven't checked out my recertification video, check that video out because I talk about how there's so many delays when it comes to recertifying your food stamps as well. 
and now New Mexico is having the issue. So according to the State Human Services Department, they are now in the process of unwinding and processing those renewal applications. Now, federal guidelines require the states to process applications within 30 days. And New Mexico says, look, currently we are under that margin. But the department says they have about 549 caseworkers statewide that they are processing applications for both SNAP and Medicaid. So they're dually being used, but 90% of their focus of their job is to be for SNAP renewals as well. Now, the department recently hired 200 temporary workers. They brought in about 150 volunteers as well. But they're like, hey, work with the kid. Work with us, right? We are doing all the things that we can do to try to help you out. And hopefully we can find some type of happy median. But this is like going on everywhere because in Maine, they said SNAP calls right now can wait over two hours. And in Maine, this could be violating the law. So for months in Maine, the Legislators Government Oversight Committee, they have been requesting like additional data from all the call centers that are housed within the Maine Department of Health and Human Services because they received a report, I want to say it was like back in April, and it showed that the average call was exceeding over two hours for the Office of Family Independence. Now, this April report found that the average time to speak to anybody clerical staff was about 16 minutes, but then once they got to that person, they were transferred to somebody else, and then they had to wait to speak to like an eligibility specialist. That was like another 106 minutes, and they were like, hey, that is still up. Like The average time was about 71 minutes that people were put on hold, and then they also seen where calls were being released or they were even being hung up on. And they said Maine right now is below some of the worst performing states, and last month, they did receive a warning from the federal Medicaid officials, and they said that their lengthy call center times are potentially putting the state of Maine at violation of the federal law. So they said that they do have to have access to assistance and the ability to help people apply for or renew their benefits as well. So I don't know what's going to go on with Maine, but let me know. I know a lot of you guys, and I read online where you're saying like, look, we were waiting and waiting and waiting and no one called, no one did anything. So let me know if this is really an issue. Next, we're headed to Guam. We're in Guam, the Department of Health and Human Services. They said that the pandemic EBT plan for children under the age of six was approved as well. So children under the age of six in households from 2021 through 2022, they have received approval from the USDA that they will be able to get any of those benefits between August 1st, 2021 through May 31st of 2022 or the school year for that time as well. So I like it. I love it. I want more of it. And that's it, guys. This is all that we have that's going on in the lovely world of SNAP. It wasn't as long as I thought it could be, but I try to tackle the topics a lot quicker because, you know, I value y'all time. And I know y'all have other things to do besides watching me on YouTube. But let me know what did you think about some of the topics as far as, like, New York and their pilot program. What do you think about this government shutdown? Did you even know that this affected you? Let me go ahead and put this disclaimer or go ahead and tell you guys once again because I know I'm going to have people in the back. As of right now, October benefits should not be affected. You should be able to get your benefits. Hopefully, everything will be cleared from the government shutdown at that point that November benefits will come on time. In the event that it's not and the shutdown is still going on, this will affect your November benefits. So I'm just going to tell all my moms, my grandmas, everyone that has children, you might want to go ahead and try to, you know, ration out your stamps accordingly because you don't know what's going to happen. But this is me speaking as someone who doesn't have any children. I don't have any dog in that fight. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just, I'm just telling you the news. Okay. I don't make the news. I just report it. But um, just in case to be on the safe side, as well as if there's any food pantries or different things, definitely seek those out. I know in Ohio, they are now getting, they're requesting like 15,000 pounds of food to be able to assist. So everyone just make those necessary arrangements 
in the event that the shutdown does stay a little bit longer because we see what's happening with the writer strike. We see what's happening with actresses and actors in California. They have been on strike for like four and five months. I think the last time that there was a government shutdown, it stayed to about December. So we're not speaking that. We're not claiming that. I just want you to be properly prepared just in case that does happen. Also, let me know what do you think about the farm bill? What do you think about them streamlining SNAP where you can actually request and renew over the phone as well? What do you think about the fraud in Maryland? Like $1 billion a month. This is why we can't get no extra food stamps around here. Y'all paying it out. Y'all giving it to everyone. Everybody's getting it. So let me know all the things. Are you still waiting to renew your SNAP benefits? Are you still waiting on your $120 summer EBT? Let me know all the things down below as, as well as grab you some Amazon Prime. I mean, y'all, it's free. At this point, we need every deal discount that we can get. So grab some Amazon Prime and please like, comment, subscribe. And I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.